being our last man standing game in Autodesk Inventor. Today what we're going to be looking at doing is focusing on blueprint reading, geometric design and tolerancing, 3D parametric modeling, and then later in the next video we're going to take a look at toolpath creation and engraving. To begin we're going to start with a rectangle that is 8 inches wide by 4 inches tall. We're also going to be using these dimensions here in order to place these points. You can reference this drawing as a PDF as well. To begin with Inventor open, we're going to come up to our ribbon bar and we're going to go and select New from the top. We're going to choose Standard Data IPT, click Create. Once our ribbon bar is open at the top, we're going to choose the drawing with the green plus mark, Start 2D Sketch. As always, we start from our XY plane. When it highlights red, click to select it. And then we're going to click front in our world view cube in order to zoom out. From our ribbon bar at the top, we're going to start with our rectangle tool. Bring your cursor down to the origin. Once your cursor touches the origin, your yellow dot turns to green. Let's you know that you're at the origin. Click and stretch out a rectangle. The boxes that are in the top, we're going to change that dimension to 8 inches. Type 8 on your keyboard. You can press the tab key. My vertical dimension is going to be 4. And then press enter on the keyboard. Now that we have a rectangle drawn, we're going to come up to the top. Green check mark, finish sketch. We're going to go to our home button. Now we can view everything. If you take a look at our drawing, over here you can see that the thickness of our material for our last man standing game is 0.75, three quarters of an inch. Going back to my drawing, I'm going to go up to the top ribbon bar. I'm going to select extrude. And from my menu that pops up here, I am going to choose direction Two, which is the flip direction, the second button in, and I'm going to change my distance to 0.75. We always extrude direction number two, the flip direction, for our first extrusion, and for this distance we're typing in 0.75. Once you have that done, select OK. Now we're going to take and we're going to look at placing points for all these holes that are in here. We are only going to place these five points going up at an angle, we're going to dimension those, and then we're going to use our rectangular pattern feature in order to pattern those holes. So these are dimensions that we're working on right here now. Back to our part. I'm going to come up to the ribbon bar, click on the drawing with the green plus mark, place your cursor on your front view. When it highlights red, click to select it. And then you can click front in your world view cube in order to center it. Or you can click home and zoom all from your menu at the right. Okay, to place those points, we're going to come up to our rim bar in the top. We're going to click on the point tool and select that. And then starting down towards the bottom left-hand corner of our part, I am going to click to place one point, click to place the second, click to place a third, click to place a fourth, and click to place a fifth one. So I kind of placed them going up at an angle to separate them apart from one another. Next we have to dimension these points. If you take a look at our drawing, this first point is 0.5 up from the bottom and 0.75 in from the left hand side. So I'm going to get my dimension tool from the top ribbon bar. I'm going to come down and I want to select the bottom of my part. When it highlights red, click, push your cursor up until you get to your first point. When it highlights red, click and push this dimension out to the left hand side. This dimension was 0.5. And then you can press enter on the keyboard or you can select the green check mark. With our dimension tool again, I want to select the left hand side of my block and a point again, that first point, click to place it, and here I'm going to type in 0.75, 
and then green check mark or enter on the keyboard. Now I'm on to my second point. You can see my second point here is 0.875 up from the bottom and 1.5 in from the left hand side. Going back to our drawing with our dimension tool, I want to click the bottom of my part, go up to that second point, bring this dimension out to the side. You see how this is already highlighted in blue, so I don't have to press delete. I can just type in 0.875 and it replaces the value that's in there. Green check mark or enter on your keyboard. I'm going to select the left hand side of my part. And that second point again, when it highlights red, click. Bring this dimension down. See how that dimension value is highlighted already? So I can type in 1.5 and it replaces that value. Green check mark or enter on the keyboard. Continuing with my dimensions, you guys can go back and reference this sheet, but I'm going to continue dimensioning to get these five points dimensioned at an angle. You can follow along. Dimension from the bottom of my part to the third point. Bring this dimension out to the side. This dimension is 1.25 green check mark, dimension from the left hand side of your part to that third point, bring this dimension down, this dimension is 2.25, green check mark or enter on your keyboard. For my fourth point, I'm going to dimension from the bottom to that fourth point, bring this dimension out to the left, this dimension is 1.625. Green check mark. Dimension from the left hand side of my part to your fourth point. Bring this dimension down. This dimension is three inches. Green check mark or enter on your keyboard. And for my last point, dimension from the bottom of the part to your last point. Bring this dimension out to the side. This dimension is two. Green check mark or enter on the keyboard. And for my final dimension, I'm going to dimension from the left hand side of my part to the point, bring this dimension down, and this dimension is 3.75, green check mark, or enter on the keyboard. Now all of these dimensions match the ones that are on a PDF drawing as well that you can see. The next thing we're going to do is use those points in order to create the rest of the points and I'm going to use a rectangular pattern. Okay, We're going to select the feature, click the y-axis, we're going to flip the direction, enter in our quantity and our spacing. We're going to do that for the next four rows. So going back to my part, I have these five points dimensioned. Right next to your dimension tool there's the rectangular pattern. Once your mouse is on it, click and my rectangular pattern box opens up. The first thing it wants me to do is select geometry. I'm going to click the point that's in the lower left hand corner of my part. When it highlights red, click to select it. The next thing they want me to do is select the direction that I want it to get patterned in. So I'm going to click my pick tool. I'm going to click my Y axis here when it highlights red, click. Now this green arrow is pointing down, so I need to flip the direction that I want it to go in. See how the green arrow points up now? Then I'm going to enter in my quantity, which is 5, and my spacing, 0.75, and click OK. And you see how it places the five points in. So we made one point in order to create the other four. Let's do that again for the next one. Rectangle tool. I'm going to select my second point that I dimensioned. I'm going to click my direction pick tool, and I'm going to select my Y axis. Green arrow is pointing down, so I'm going to flip the direction of that. I'm going to enter in my quantity of 4 and my line spacing and my spacing I'm going to change to 0.75. Click OK. And there I have those four entered in. Next, I'm going to rectangle tool again. I'm going to select my geometry, which is going to be this third point. When it highlights red, click to select it. I'm going to choose my direction tool and I'm going to select my y-axis. 
green arrow pointing down, so I'm going to use the flip button in order to flip that direction. Green arrow needs to point up. I'm going to type in 3 for my quantity, and my spacing is 0.75. Click OK. Next, rectangle tool again. This is the last one we're going to pattern. We're going to click that fourth point. Click my direction pick tool. Select my Y axis. Green arrow is pointing down here. So I'm going to flip that so the green arrow points up. Two is the correct quantity I'm going to type in here. And my spacing is going to be 0.75. Click OK. Now I have all my points in there. Next we're going to change those points and create holes with them. So we're going to green check mark finish sketch in the upper right hand corner of our ribbon bar. Green check mark. And I'm going to choose hole tool from my top ribbon bar. Choose the hole tool. Click to select it. Once you click the hole tool, this menu pops up and it should also automatically select all 15 of those holes that are there. You can check to see that it's selected because it says 15 selected. Next, let's take a look at this menu. I want to have a simple hole, so this button should be selected. There should be no seat. I'm going to enter in a distance, so this button should be selected. And coming down here, I want to have my depth of the hole, 0.25. I want to have the diameter of the hole change to 0.125. Once you have 0 0.25, 0 0.125 entered in, select OK, and that just created all of your holes that are in there. Next, if you take a look at our drawing, when you're playing the game, when you're playing the game, there's this little tray that is pocketed in here for us to put the pegs in once they're out of the triangle pattern. This rectangle is one inch horizontal dimension and 3.5 inches for my vertical dimension. So we're going to take and begin drawing that. In order to start that we're going to need another 2D sketch. So go to your drawing and the green plus mark in the upper left hand corner of your ribbon bar. Click and we're going to put that on our front view and click to place it. Click front in your world view cube in order to center it and then we're going to take and draw using a rectangle tool. Select your rectangle tool from the top ribbon bar. We're going to click and we're going to stretch out a rectangle. The horizontal dimension for that rectangle was 1. Type 1 on your keyboard. Press the tab key. My vertical dimension for that rectangle was 3.5. Type that in and press enter on your keyboard. Next we have to dimension this for the location. If you take a look at our drawing you can see that it is 0.25 inches up from the bottom and it is 4.5 inches in from the left hand side. So let's enter in those dimensions. We're going to get our dimension tool from the top ribbon bar. We're going to dimension from the bottom of your part. When that line turns right click to select it and we're going to dimension to the bottom of our rectangle that we just drew. When that turns red click to select it. This dimension I'm going to pull out to the side Click to place it, and this dimension is going to be 0.25. Type that in and green check mark or enter on a keyboard. Next, we have to enter in another dimension. We're going to dimension from the left hand side of my part. When that line turns right, click to select it. I'm going to bring my cursor over and touch the left hand side of the rectangle that I just drew. When it turns red, click to select it and bring this dimension down. Click to place your dimension. This dimension is 4.5. Type that into the area down here and green check mark or enter on your keyboard. Once those are in, if you take a look at our corners on this, you can see that our corners, they all have curves in them called fillets. They are not 90 degree corners. So these four fillets have a radius of 0.125. Going back to our drawing, we're going to place those fillets in. 
So we're going to come over here to our ribbon bar right next to the rectangle tool, and I'm going to select my fillet tool. When the fillet tool opens up, it should default to 0.125, which is what we need. If it doesn't, you can highlight this dimension here and type 0.125. Then we're going to come over and we're going to click one side of our rectangle and then click the opposing side, and that's going to put a fillet in there for you. We're going to continue our round our rectangle doing that. Clicking the top and the right-hand side, that puts that fillet in there. Click the right-hand side in the bottom, that puts that fillet in the corner. Click the bottom and the left-hand side, and that's going to fillet all of your corners. When you're finished, you can close out this fillet menu, and that puts our corners in. Green check mark to finish sketch. And now we're going to extrude that into a pocket. So I'm going to come up to my ribbon bar. I'm going to select extrude. It should automatically pick up on that area that we just drew. However, it doesn't. You just need to put your mouse over that rectangle and click to select it. Now this is getting extruded the wrong direction. So I want to turn this from a join to a cut. So select this second button. That's going to cut it. Now we have to set the depth that we're going to cut that. So I'm going to go up to this distance here, and I am going to select 0.25 quarter inch. Once you have that selected, click OK. Now we have our part done. We're going to change this to the wood block that we're going to mill it into. So come on up to the top to where it says default, and we're going to change your material type from default I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to do yellow pine, which looks good and close to the part that we're going to mill it in. Or you can go all the way up to the top. Into the bees for birch natural polished. That also looks very similar to the wood that we're going to use. When you're finished with this, you're going to go up to the top orange file in the left-hand corner of your ribbon bar, and we're going to come down and we're going to save as. We're going to make this go to your H drive. So you want to go up to your H drive and you want to find first initial last name 000, first initial last name 000, and it needs to be that one that has a gray box with a green line underneath it. If you don't save it to your H drive, it's going to be gone the next time we open it up. We're going to title the part. We're going to title the part, Last Man Standing. And we're going to put your last name after that. So my file name is Last Man Standing, and then my last name. Make sure your H drive is selected, first initial, last name, 000, and click Save. Congratulations on making the drawing for the Last Man Standing game.